Kings and Queens, your majesties, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for always returning. Trust you and yours are well and you're loving yourself and others like always. Many thanks to all of you for the support you give to the channel. Thank you so much to our channel members, to our anonymous supporters, to all of you, my esteemed subscribers, you're loved, celebrated and appreciated, of course. I bring you good news today again. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so happy and I believe for those of you who have been following my Sahel um, stories for the while, you'll be happy as well. Guess what? <laughs> so Burkina Faso, under the leadership of our Abu Ibrahim Traore, have decided to ban Western clothing importation in their country. Whether finished products, whether just textiles, whether yarns, it has been banned. Why? Because Ibrahim Traore is focused at developing their textile industry. He is like, we have cotton, right? We have our own attires. Why are we not embracing our own? We are importing most of this clothing. And when you look at some of this clothing that are pushed into the continent of Africa, you discover that some of this clothing are already used. You don't know who used them. They are pushed in here. People rush to them. They buy them. Like the continent of Africa is one of the regions that um, patronize mostly fairly used clothing from Europe and America. Like Europe and America are making money, serious money from, I don't know, is it thrifted clothing? They call it thrifted. In some parts, they call it Okirika. <laughs> Africa consumed that a lot. Clothing that people have worn, you don't know who wore this clothing. Sometimes these clothing are not monitored and sterilized well. They are pushed in here and dumped here because they see Africa as a dumping ground. Of course, they don't even value us. They don't see us as humans. So they make us hate our own, okay? We grow cotton, but why is it that we can't wear our own materials? Why is it that we can't wear our own clothing? Why is it that we can't wear made in Africa? We are always depending on Europe and America for clothing, for food, for everything as if we don't have, okay? And it is in this light that Ibrahim Traore said no. We will not continue like this in Burkina Faso. There has to be a change. If we are looking at developing the textile industry in Burkina Faso, we have to put a stop to any foreign material entering into Burkina Faso. We have to adapt into our own. We have to acknowledge our own. We have to wear what we produce. Okay, we can't be exporting cotton, allowing these people to come and take out our cotton, manufacture this clothing, wear them. After they are done wearing them, they throw the racks to us <laughs> to wear. And again, we have to propagate our cultures, our way of dressing, and way of life. Who would not love Ibrahim Traore, Your Majesty? Who would not love this man? And that's why whenever I talk about the Sahel and I talk about Burkina Faso, you see the joy radiating everywhere. I can't help it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I just can't help it. I can't help it. How will you hate a man like this? If you really want the continent to succeed and progress, how will you hate a man like Ibrahim Trout? You can't hate this man. Let's listen to the news and we listen to the streets. And then we take it out from there, your majesties. The decision comes as a relief to those involved in the textile industry and has restored the reputation of Faso Danfani, Burkina Faso's main traditional loincloth. Jermaine Compaure is the promoter of a textile vocational training center. She believes this measure will enhance the work of women weavers. C'est vu à sa juste valeur. This decision is seen at its true value so that we can restore more value to the Bukinabe cotton value chain. So we frankly welcome this government decision. Jermaine employs mainly women in her center. 
She, like many of her peers, have over the years suffered from bad competition. It's a situation that has had an impact on her output along with jobs. But since the announcement of the ban late in September, work has resumed on a daily basis. Jermaine's workshop is now running at a full capacity. We were faced with the problem of unfair competition from imported fabrics made from petroleum derivatives which are invading the market and taking over the woven loincloth sector. This meant that everything was complicated in this sense. Burkina Faso is a major cotton producer and exporter in the West African sub-region. Despite this, the country has only 3% thoroughput in cotton processing. Less than 3% of our cotton is processed. Why do we have a problem processing our cotton? And why do other yarns and woven loincloths from elsewhere invade the market to the detriment of what we value locally? At this school in the Kilwin district of Ouagadougou, Faso Danfani has been the school uniform since 2008. For the foundation, it's a way of encouraging students to consume Bukinabe products and a way of giving a boost to local craftsmen. Abdullahi Koanda says he would have liked to see a presidential decree banning the imports of weaving yarns and woven loincloths. We would have liked the president to issue a decree strictly banning all imported yarns and to prohibit the import of these yarns for a time in order to protect our heritage. We encourage the government to go ahead and be firm in implementing its joint communique. The latest nationwide ban on the import of weaving yarns and woven loincloths follows the introduction of Faso Danfani as a school uniform by the government last year. So, Burkina Faso has banned colonial wigs, these lawyers' wigs that they put on their head, and judges too, they wear them. But I want to ask, why do Africa still wear these wigs? After all the colonial era, we are still putting on these wigs. Well, the good news is that Burkina Faso say they don't want it anymore. They have their own, see, see it on the screen, they now have their own attire in the law court. Not only that, Ibrahim Traore also banned Western fabrics. So he banned all this Okrika. You are seeing it there. He now approved their local, locally made fabrics to be used across the nation. And let me tell you, Burkina Faso has the be one of the best cotton, cotton, natural cotton. In fact, they have it in large quantity. The people of Burkina Faso, you guys are so blessed to have one of the best presidents in the world because you see Brian Trolley that, that man is like is, his decision is divine his decision is like it's like a naturally endowed the kind of wisdom that this man has to be honest I've, I've, I've like trying to see the ones that can match it in Africa I haven't I haven't you guys should protect this man with all cost protect him with all cost Ibrahim Traoré has made it clear that his vision for Burkina Faso is one of economic independence. When he became president, he took a hard look at the country's economy and saw a pattern that's all too familiar across Africa. Dependency. Dependency on Western countries for basic goods, dependency on foreign aid, and dependency on imported goods, including fabrics. Burkina Faso's Ibrahim Traoré bans Western fabrics to boost local production. This story is more than just about clothes. It's about economic freedom, cultural revival, and breaking the chains of neo-colonialism. This decision is seen at its true value, so that we can restore more value to the Bukinabe cotton value chain. So we frankly welcome this government decision. We were faced with the problem of unfair competition from imported fabrics made from petroleum derivatives, which are invading the market and taking over the woven loincloth sector. This meant that everything was complicated in this sense. Your Majesties, um, you have heard that I, I became emotional 
uh, the process because <sighs> when you look at the continent of Africa, you discover that we are so dependent. We are not dependent because we do not have the original thing that could produce most of the things that we depend on. We are dependent because this is what the West want. Okay, a continent that is dependent on the West for everything. So that at the long run, we don't even see how important we are as Africans to the development of the whole world and its economy. But we don't know that these people are killing us gradually. Whatever it is that is used for technology in the world today was gotten from Africa, is gotten from Africa yesterday, today, and it will always be gotten from here. They tell you that the world will happen, the first and second world will happen because of this, because of that, but they never told you that the main reason why there was a world war ever in this world is because of the resources of Africa. They started fighting themselves because they are looking for who is going to have the upper hand to take the majority of what Africa possess. That is why there were world war ever in the world. The first and the second was because of Africa. And if Africa is not in the state where they have positioned Africa to be, do you think they'll be able to keep harnessing these things that they have? And that is why I get emotional seeing this young man doing what people who are twice his age cannot do for their own nation, topless of doing it for a region. We have leaders who know the solution to the problems of this continent. We have leaders who have seen, who have, they are, they are old enough, they have, they, they have grown enough to know the problems to the continent's issues and, the, sorry, they know the problems of the continent and the solution to the problems that the continent have. But since they are puppets, they are paying allegiance to the West, they do not want to do anything because something is tying them down. They do not want to take that risk. They are so attached to their family, they don't want to lose their family. And maybe these people are using their families against them. They are too attached to the wealth, the prestige, the position they are in. They do not want to lose it. But look at this young man. Ibrahim Traoré giving an assignment to all leaders in the continent of Africa. Every day, something new comes from, the, from, from Burkina Faso. Every day, something new comes from Burkina Faso. Every day you hear good news. Oh, this man is trying to liaise with these people so that they can have the, the, the upper hand in producing these. They are trying to train their people so that they can have the knowledge. So, you name them. As of two years ago, I sat on this channel and I keep hammering. Why is it that Africans prefer imported goods and material or end products than what they make in their own countries? Why? Colonization has made us believe that everything that is produced in Africa do not have the, 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 the quality that it should have. And that's why this ban is, is, is very important. Because still in Burkina Faso, there are people that believe that the one they produce in their house is no good. So still there is a ban on it, so it's prohibited to cross the waters into Burkina Faso. It is prohibited to cross the air into Burkina Faso. So there will be no other option other than to start utilizing. And when there is a ban on something, you begin to make use or make do with what you have. And you begin to bring out the, the, the good that is in that thing that you are looking at as if it's no good. We look at our textile, our materials, our clothing, like it's not up to, it's not to the standard. You we, See, when you look at the, the, the fashion industry, clothing industry, Majority of the people who spend more in this country are Africans. Celebrities are celebrities as finishers in this continent. If you hear how much somebody is, is willing to spend on a clothing, choose a piece, and you see the thing very small, it's not even covering any meal. The thing look like maybe inner garments. And if they tell you how much they bought that thing, you will never believe it. We have torn ourselves into slaves for other people. They are eating from us, taking raw materials. Even the hard-earned money we make, they still collect it from us because we don't want to value what we have. We don't want to divert energy to producing our own. If every president in the continent of Africa ban an importation of, of, of finished clothing, textiles and everything, we will begin to see the gold in our own that we are rejecting.
Why should we export cotton in the first place? We export cotton and then we, 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 we import a already used clothes. You don't know who wore it. You don't know the kind of disease that's lingering in that clothing. You import that. They turn our continent to dumping ground. They don't care. And then we sit down hoping that one Messiah will come from the sky to come and do, yeah, I have come and I have saved you. Nothing is going to happen. You are the savior of yourself. The, 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 the earlier we begin to realize is the better for us. You want to work out your salvation. That's what Ibrahim Traore is doing. He is working out the salvation of Burkina Bays by himself. And he's teaching the Burkina Bays to work out their salvation with their hands. Europe and America are working out their salvation. No? And that's why they are doing everything to keep lingering and lurking around Africa to, 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 to deceive people and take. They are looking for who has a weak mind. They are looking for somewhere that they can hold something on. So they can have open hand in that country to keep harnessing resources. They, are never, they have never gone. They never left and they are not leaving. It's a thing of joy. I'm so happy and emotional at the same time. And what I wish and pray for is that other presidents in the continent will adapt this and try to put some restriction on already made clothing that are coming into the continent, imported clothing coming into the, into the continent, textiles and everything. Let's make do with our own. We have everything. We are so rich. Why are we still so poor? Your majesties, we are kings and queens, we are royalty. Why should we leave ourselves to the point where we are eating the straps that is, that is falling from the table? It's not good. Our best right, we have let it go. We have to get back what is ours. How can you be a, a cotton producer and you don't have clothes to, you don't, you don't wear your clothing? How can you be a cotton producer and other people's textiles are, are, are imported ones and what is more in your What are you doing with the cotton? These people will come and carry the cotton in a cheap price and send these clothes to you in expensive way, this thing, and then you buy it. Abba, let's not do this to ourselves. Propagate African clothing. Propagate your nation's clothing. Wear it. It's not masquerade. Look at me, I'm inside like this. Have I died? It's not a masquerade. Wear your, your, your nation's clothing. Propagate your, your country's economy. We also the cause of our problems. We don't want to buy these things. The government will spend money on trying to develop the, the industry. We don't buy it. If you don't buy it, how will the industry keep going? Your Majesties, if you are so patriotic and everything, wear your country's textiles, wear their clothing. Be always wearing important. I'm not saying you should not wear important, though. You can wear, but also proper wear your own nation's uh, 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 clothing. Propagate them, buy from them, dress dress in your own nation's cotton instead of wearing something that you don't know who wore it before, or spending so thousands of of dollars to buy a piece of inner garment that you wear and say you are you are wearing an expensive clothes. I'm going to see you in my next one. Until then, love yourself, love others, stay safe, stay positive, always your majesty. Bye for now.